God, we honor your name. 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 Because you're holy, because you're righteous, because you're just, because there's none like you in all of the earth. God, we honor your name. Oh God, we bless you and we extol you and we lift you up. Hallelujah. We hallow your name in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, come on your name here. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallow your name in this place. We honor your name in this place. You are holy, you're righteous, you're just God, and there's none like you in all of the earth. And we thank you, God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, God, for your holiness. We thank you, God, for never giving up on us. Hallelujah. And we love you so much, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, even now as we're in this atmosphere, we pray, Lord, that you would speak to us. Let our ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And cause us, Lord, not just to be hearers of your word. We don't want to be able to hear your word and not become your word. So God, cause your word to have power in our life. As you speak it, cause us to become it. As you speak it, cause us to become it. As you speak it, cause us to become it. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you so much for your righteousness, for your holiness, for your faithfulness. And we give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, who is like our Lord? Who is like our Lord? You're in the sanctuary. You may be seated. Today is our first Sunday of having um, a partial in-person worship service uh, here at our Towson campus. We are excited to be here. We are excited that we have seen the righteous hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. We've seen the faithful hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. I would have fainted except I believe to see the goodness of the Lord while in the land of the living. Hallelujah. And God's been faithful to us morning by morning. Hallelujah. Brand new mercies we've seen. All that we needed, the Lord's hand. I, I, I feel the power of God. I said all that we've needed, the Lord's hand has provided. We declare that God is faithful. Hallelujah. And we honor God so much uh, for who he is to us. I'm so glad to be with you uh, this morning in your homes, on your tablets, on your devices, on your phones. And those who are here in person on this morning, we're so glad to be with you. God is so good to us. God is so good to us. God is so good to us. He's been better to us than we've been to ourselves is what we heard in the church that I grew up in, and I believe it. And this, this morning, you may ha have a little bit more background uh, than you normally do, and we're excited about it because the body's coming together. And we've been, we've been together from a social distance or a physical distance place, but God is causing us to come back together in this season, and we honor God. Um, God bless you. Those of you who were not able to make any of our uh, services in person, uh, I need to let you know that we miss you. Uh, we miss your faces. We miss seeing your smiling faces. Even those who are here this morning, I miss seeing your smiling faces because you all got on masks and I can't see your smiling faces. Don't take them off. <laughs> Leave them right there behind the mask. Uh, but we're so glad that uh, you're here and um, we look forward to today where the world can be unmasked. Uh, we look for the day because that which is unmasked can be healed. Good God Almighty, I don't, that's, that's too much. We'll talk about that another time. But we thank God for his faithfulness towards us. And um, hallelujah. And I pray that you enjoyed this worship. How about this worship team this morning leading us in the presence of the Lord? We thank God. Honor God for my spiritual father, who is also my biological father, uh, Archbishop Ralph Dennis. And... Uh, Thank God for him and uh, for his lovely wife, my mama, Lady D. We thank God and Pastor Tanya and our kids. And I'm uh, just so, so glad to be with you. I, I got to get into the word. Uh, got to get into the word. And so we'll go ahead and we'll get through this. It's not going to be before you very long. But I need to, before I get into that, I need to say um, right now, uh, because today is 
uh, the 20th of September. So I need to say uh, right now, congratulations to all of those who were licensed and ordained on yesterday. Uh, ministers, elders, and deacons are going forward in ministry. Uh, we're excited, we're excited, excited for you about what the Lord is going to be doing in your lives. And we declare that the whole earth will benefit from your assignment. Well, I feel the power of God. I don't know about anybody else. I said the whole earth will benefit from your assignment. As you obey God, things change around you. I'm going to say that again. As you obey God, things change around you. Hallelujah. For the Bible declares that your obedience is even better than sacrifice. And so as you obey God, anticipate new favor. Good God, Lord Jesus. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God. Anticipate new favor and greater dimensions. Your oil is making room for you. Your oil is making room for you. Your oil is making room for you. And so we thank God for you. Um, I, if you have your Bibles, turn with me if you would. Um, listen, I'm, I've got to run through this quick because this is a long message and I don't have a lot of time. We're not going to split it. We're going to try to do it within the time that has been allotted. So that means I've got to get to it and can't repeat myself 17 times like preachers do. Um, that means I got I to gotta just, uh, just get on this. Um, uh, John, the uh, 14th chapter, Father, please, we ask that you would bless your word, cause your word to be a lamp to our feet and a light into our pathway. And as we study and read your word, we pray, God, um, as we go through the scripture, that it would be life for us. Cause it to move us into new dimensions that you have planned for our lives. And we give you glory and honor for the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I have been, I've been in this place, and some of you have heard, it, heard me in this place, and I've got to, I'm going to stay here for a minute. Um, John, St. John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, there are many mansions. I don't like the translation that says rooms. I like mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, good God Almighty, God's doing the work. That where I am, there you may be also. Good God Almighty. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest and how we can know the way. And Jesus said unto him, here's where I'm going to park a little bit long today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That was John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. I want to talk to us just for a moment. God's going to work this one out. God's going to work this one out. Um. It's important for us as we go through these, these, these passages of Scripture, and I, I may need to lay a little foundation, and, and we can start the clock rolling now, is that as we go through these passages of Scripture, it is important for us to understand, first of all, when the Scripture talks about let not thy heart be troubled, that that is a statement to us that says that we have the ability to control our heart. We have the ability to make sure that our heart is under our own control. Yeah. And see, sometimes we believe that situations have a little bit more control of our hearts than we do. We think sometimes the things that we go through have a little bit more to do with how we feel and how we respond and what's going to happen than we actually do. But what the scripture suggests here when it says, let not your heart be troubled, it is actually suggesting to us that you have a certain amount of strength. And you've got enough strength to control your soul. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. To make sure that your soul is not going to become troubled. I've put that power, that dynamic, that control in the hand of the believer. 
The question becomes, have we been uh, wielding our power or have we been allowing our power to be dormant and to see what life does? And many of us allow life to dictate to us what our soul's response would be. And the scripture would tell us today that, that don't allow life to be the dictator of your soul's events, but instead to make sure that you are in control. For I have given you power, good God Almighty, and all, the, listen, and all power, according to scripture in Romans, comes from God. So I've given you the power and the ability to make sure that whatever is happening in your life, that you have control over the response. Let not your heart be troubled. How do I make sure now? But how do I counter react? How do I counter respond to the trouble that would come into my soul? The scripture says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. So believing in God becomes now the remedy, the, um, the cure. It becomes how we make sure that souls don't become troubled. I make sure my soul isn't troubled because I believe some things about God that the world doesn't believe. And because I believe these things about God, my soul doesn't end up being interfered with the way the rest of the world is interfered with. See, there's a peace that the world does not have, that I have. Good God, you, are, you understand in the scripture, he says this way, he says, my peace I give with you. Not as the world will give, y'all, good God, I give I you, but my peace, I give you my peace. And so, so here it is, what God is saying to us, he's saying, I'm ready to deliver unto you, if you would just be in a place of belief, the power to, be, uh, to have victory over trouble in your soul. I got to move. I got to I got to move. So, so, so let me move fast because a lot of you heard this already. So let me let me make some haste here. So our soul is, as we already know, is made up of our or our, our heart rather is made up of our our our, our uh, will, our emotions and our intellect, our soul, our soul, our heart. That area of our being is made up of our will, our emotions and our intellect. And as our will, our emotions, and our intellect have a great ability to then determine how we respond to the rest of our lives. If I can control your emotions, I can cause you to become erratic and do some things you would never do. You know, you, you, we all know, we've all been in a place sometimes where somebody hurts us and we respond. You, you've heard the saying before that hurt people. Hurt people, right? And we, why do we say that? We say because when somebody gets damaged in their emotions like that, they have no choice or they have no other recourse other than to respond according to whatever they have experienced. But that changes for the life of the believer. I'm here to let you know that that is the testimony of an unbeliever. But the believer, the key person who is built in the kingdom of God, has a different response. You can have things happen to you and still have victory over all of it. Good God Almighty. Oh, Lord, I hope if you're home, you're writing in your chat box or, or if you're here in the sanctuary declaring, I've got victory over all of it. I've got victory. Good God. I've got, I'm going to say it again. I have victory over all of it. I have victory over all of it. There are things that have come to interfere with who I am, with where I'm going, and I'm declaring in this season that I have victory over it and nothing that comes my way can actually even trouble my soul. Wow. Can you imagine your life with a soul that will not be troubled? Just see it for a moment. See your life not being troubled by situations, not being troubled by circumstances where you're so steady and so rested in the promises of God that nothing can shake you, nothing can move you, nothing causes you to stand or move outside of the will of the plan and the purpose of God. That's where God has us. I got to I got to let, let me move. The Bible says, and see, I got to move because I can get caught up in this. And, uh, but it says, let not the heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. The word trouble in that particular version, or, or as we read that, and some of your, your uh, other versions give you some other words that are there. But if you go back to the Greek language, one of the things you find out is that word trouble there is uh, teruso. And that word there actually means of an uncertain affinity. Let not your heart enter into a place of uncertainness. 
Don't let your heart be in a place where it can't figure out why and what's going on and which way are we going. Y'all could God Almighty. You might see the world and look at the world and say, I can't figure that out. But you better keep this figured out. Yeah. Don't let your heart be conformed to what's happening in the rest of the world. And it's true, it's true, it's very true that if we look at all the other things that are happening in the world, that we could say there's some uncertainty here. It's very true. We could look at the rest of the world and we could say, oh, my goodness, the fires in California are larger than they were last year. I thought last year was horrible. Uh, but this year we've had over, I forgot what the number was, uh, 30,000 maybe. I don't, 30 million. I don't know what the number is. I just know it was too large of a number of how many uh, acres that have burned in California. And, and we've had almost 200,000 people die this year from COVID. And we've, we've had uh, so uh, many people who are, who are in the place where they've lost their businesses and lost their income and all of these things have happened and you have the nerve believer you have the audacity believer you have the gall believer to sit in this place and have peace y'all couldn't got how in the world is it that you've got peace when the rest of the world is looking at uncertainty Good God Almighty. It's because I don't believe what's happening in the world. I believe God. Good God Almighty. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. And, 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 and one of the things that you understand, when you understand this place of, of trouble, the other thing that you get by, when you understand that Greek word there, Darian, what you get is you also get the understanding that this is a world, a word that speaks to moving parts. So there's a lot of movement happening. But as I talked about, Neil, not too long ago with you, is that we're in a place where we're not, uh, we're not looking just for movement. We're looking for momentum. Yeah. Oh, y'all not talking. We're not looking just to be busy. We're looking to be strategic. So things moving don't bother me. I'm looking for that which will cause my momentum to change. Good God. I'm looking for that which will increase my speed. I'm looking for that which is strategic, that which is purposeful, that which is part of God's plan. Can I tell us this morning that there is a plan of God that is coming out of the earth? There's a plan of God that is coming out of the earth. Excuse me, Psalm 85. I didn't mean to go here so fast. Psalm 85, verse 11. Oh, I didn't turn to it. I didn't turn to it. Psalm 85 and 11. And I got I to gotta go fast anyway because otherwise I'll be preaching the same message for a month. Psalm 85 and 11. It says this. It says, truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall uh, look down from heaven. Uh, what God has set us up for is for something to come out of the earth that is truth. Yeah. And can I tell you, that's why lies have been exposed. Don't be to clap. Hallelujah. That's why lies have been exposed because we're in a season where truth is about to spring up out of the earth. Oh, and I know you think truth we're just talking about. I'm not talking about that which is just in the media. I'm talking about you, believer. Please understand what, what we're talking about that's at hand. I'm talking about you who are called out. I'm talking about you who have been faithful to the Lord, that you are the truth. Good God Almighty. And because you are the truth, truth is about to spring forth in the earth. In dimensions that we have not seen before. I got ahead of myself. Let me just, let me just. Go ahead back to, to John's gospel and uh, let's take our time and just talk about it. If I take my time and talk, maybe I'll get through faster. Um, let not the heart be troubled, moving parts. We're not looking for moving parts. We're looking for momentum. We're looking for uh, what's going on. And we're not, what happens also when it talks about though that trouble there and, and relating it to what happens in the actual text, let not your heart be troubled. It also speaks to an inward commotion. Don't allow an inward commotion to happen. Y'all, good God. Okay. One of the things that we understand in Scripture is, uh, Carolyn, it's so good to see Terry's better half, is that, um, is that when we look at Scripture, we understand that Scripture is not written in chronological order. When you read the text, um, this, it's not necessarily one event that happened right after it. That's why, and if you read it that way, you would be upset 
because you read John's gospel and have one set of events in a particular order and read Matthew's gospel and there'll be another set of events in a particular order and then you'll be trying to figure out why. So, so we know that the, that the gospels uh, are not written in any particular order so that we know they are recalling and you got to remember that they're writing these scriptures uh, tens of years, 20, 20, well, actually about 50 years after they've actually had the events. So, so they're writing this scripture later on about how some things have happened. This is not I'm writing while it's going on and then this is what happened next. And when you understand that scripture, then you now understand that then the writers of the scripture are writing with intention. They're writing to make sure that you can get the point of the scripture. And so what they do is they put within the text certain events that would then testify to other parts. So right before uh, chapter 14 of Matthew's uh, I'm sorry, of John's, John 14, right before chapter 14, of course, you have chapter 13. And in chapter 13, what you find at the end of that clause is you find now the, the, the part of scripture that talks about how now, uh, excuse me, Peter, before the cock crows three times, you're going to be in a place where you deny God, right? It says you're going to be in a place where you deny God. It's, it's talking about the denial that will happen from the faithful to God himself. Right. And, you, and we all know what happens with Peter and stuff like that. Don't need to go through that. That'll make it a lot longer. And so right after this point of you, you got this warning about the denials of Peter. Then you have let not your heart be troubled, which means that there are some events. See, he, he, you see how the writer sandwiches it, that there are some events that will try to attack your heart. But you can't allow events to control your heart. Oh, God. OK. But you can't a lot of so so let not heart be troubled. Believe God, be also me. But also find so many mansions. If I know so, I would have told you, right? If I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go again, we're gonna right? So 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 now we go through all of this. What one thing I said what, that I also like is it says it says the remedy or the cure for troubled hearts is belief. Yeah. The cure for troubled hearts is belief. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Yeah. Huh? You know, it's, it's almost like. Uh, if I would go home and, and, and I go to William's room and I say, William, I don't want to see you making up your bed and it looking so bad like that again. My, my son, he's only eight. So when he makes up his bed, he leaves his sheet folded up at the bottom of the bed as if I can't tell that is just a cover fold, you know, pulled over this big lump in the middle. Do you understand, Carolyn, what I'm talking about at all? And so um, and so I have to tell him uh, Listen, pull the blanket back off, put your hands on the sheet, pull the sheets up, and then put the blanket back over. And so what God is saying is, I know the heart's been troubled. Just believe in me. See, it's a simple instruction. Y'all, I'm, I'm sorry. It's a simple instruction. It's a very simple instruction. And sometimes I know we don't like simplicity in Scripture. But let me tell you, if you get the simplicity of the Scripture, you walk in a place of victory. The simplicity of scripture says, if you walk in a place of belief, you won't be troubled. Not just simple belief, belief in God. Believe in God and believe also in me. Y'all can again. All right. And so, so, so that's, that's what happens in scripture. So, so let's, let's, um, and so we understand that belief in God then talks about now, if you understood that word pistio uh, in the Greek, you understand that that means to give credit. It means to think to be true, to be persuaded of, to be entrusted of, of one and of one's fidelity. To be entrusted of one and his fidelity, his faithfulness, his commitment, his duty, his assignment, his commitment towards us. So we trust in that. So, so let me, I'm, I gotta move, I'm moving swiftly. So he says, he says, now you understand that the soul is made up of our will, our emotions, and our intellect. If you're home, you need to write this down. Our will, our emotions, and our intellect. I would, I would like the three just to be one after another. Leave some space in between it just so you can see it. Our will, uh, and our editors will make sure uh, that they get something there. Our will, our emotions, and our intellect. I just give them homework all the time. He just, when our editors just shook his head, it was like, oh my God. Our will, our emotions, and our intellect. And as you get our will, our emotions, and our intellect, it'll probably be on this side of the screen. Will, emotions, and intellect. And as, as we do our will, and our emotions, and our intellect, then we, we, we realize that, um, that those three things 
if we're not careful, will control our everyday lives. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so it is important for me to make sure that what I think is managed. Ooh, that what I think is something that I'm intentional about. As a believer, rid yourself from random thoughts. Oh, I'm talking good now and here. I, I, uh, can I say it again? As believers, rid yourself from random thoughts. Random thoughts have been getting you in trouble. Random thoughts have been causing chaos. I'm talking about random thoughts, just random thoughts. Random thoughts get you calling somebody late at night. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me for a moment. Random thoughts. Random thoughts get you doing all kinds of things. Random thoughts get you spending a mortgage at the casino. Random thoughts. They make you think that you can hit the Powerball. Random thoughts make you think that a drink can soothe your what you have going on in your inward man. Random thoughts make you think that putting a spike in your arm can help your issues of your life. Random thoughts. Believers, rid yourself of yeah. random thoughts. So Philippians 4 and 8 would say it this way. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I ain't saying nothing in the order. Uh, I ain't doing nothing. But let me say Philippians 4 uh, and 8 would say then, it would say, say it this way. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever is just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, and if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Yes. Think on these things. Uh, I'm messing my message up. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm doing good. I'm not messing up. I'm not messing up. Okay. Praise the Lord. I've been, okay. Praise the Lord. All right. So, so, so let's go, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's, let's digress. Will, emotions, intellect are three ways that really have impacted how I think and what I do. So what does Jesus then say to his people? He says, of course, believe. But God, I need you when belief is just not enough. I know there's some people who says, Bishop G, what I do when belief is not enough. Well, you do like the man whose son was a lunatic yeah. and who went to Jesus' disciples and asked him to heal his son. And Jesus said, do you believe? And he said, Lord, I believe. But please help thou my unbelief. Which means that just believing hasn't been enough. I've got areas of belief. Okay. I've got areas of belief. I believe for some things and some things I just don't know how to believe you for yet. I know how to believe you for a good job, but I don't know how to believe you for a good spouse. Y'all know, you understand what I mean? I know how to, you, you understand what I'm saying? I, I'm sorry for making it plain for some, some of us, but sometimes you just got to make it real plain. I know how to believe you got for promotion, but I don't know how to believe you how to get debt free. I need to, I know how to believe you got for increased income, but I need to believe you for student loan debt being paid off. I thought I'd at least have one more witness with me on that one, but student loan debt being, so, so Lord, I believe, but Lord, please help thou my area of unbelief. There's some areas that I don't know how you're going to do it. And God says, so when you have these areas of, of, of unbelief, then you must, you must then now understand exactly who I am. When you don't understand exactly who I am, that's where you end up with the void areas or missing areas in your belief systems. So he says that you need to know that I'm the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. Y'all could God about it. I'm going to say it again. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Because the way, the truth, and the life is to respond to, y'all not help me, the will, the emotions, and the intellect that has been interfering with your belief system. Good God, okay. All right. Let me, uh, so, so let's explain. Let's explain. So when we, speak to, when we speak about the way, I'm talking about now, excuse me for a moment. When we speak about the way, I'm talking about the because, you know, when Jesus says, I'm the way, 
um, that's not like common language for somebody to say, I'm the way. That's, we don't use that in today's language. So, so Jesus, what do you mean you're the way? What he's actually saying is, I am the road Y'all, that must be traveled. I am the journey that has been sure and set already. Boy, oh boy, I'm so sorry. I get so happy. Uh, he is saying here, in another way, he's also saying, I am that which is the manner of how things are going to get done. So when you say, what is the road or what is the way, what you're actually saying is, how? And if we would be honest, Carolyn, Devon, Brewer. Aha, didn't know I knew. If we would be honest, what we would say, what we would find out is where we really struggle with God is, God, how are you going to do it? Yeah. I think you're going to, but the, the real problem is, how are you going to do it? Yeah. Y'all, good God Almighty. And, and he needs, and he's not, he's, he's telling you, don't be get, get so caught up in the how, just know I got the how. See, because the confidence you do is you put the confidence in he who has the how. Y'all couldn't go. And if I got confidence in he who has the how, I ain't worried about the how. Because he'll just do it however he wants to do it. I'm sorry, that was a real attitude there. Right, he'll just do it however, somehow. I'm sorry, I almost went in living color on us. Two snaps and a twist and something like that. So the way speaks to the journey. The way speaks to the how. John, John 9 and 10, you've seen it in John 9 and 10, actually all throughout John 9 and 10, John, John 9 and 15, the how, when, when the guy says, my blinded eyes are going to be open. The how, God's responsibility. The way, God's responsibility. The road, God's responsibility. Good God Almighty. How? I need you to write these scriptures down because I don't have time to, to go through it. So, so and, and our editors, uh, as you're there, they'll, 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 once again, they'll get them up on the scripture so, on the screen for us. I'll, I'll say them slow. So, so look at John 9 and 10. There you will find the how. How eyes are open. There in Luke 1 and 34, what you find is how can it be, uh, uh, how can I know a man seeing I or become with a child? Seeing I have no husband. Y'all saw, y'all know that. How? How? God's got the how. Good God about it. Uh, that's, that's Luke 1 and 34. He's got the how. Matthew 26 and 54. How? Uh, how will the scriptures be fulfilled? Don't worry about it. I've got that covered for you. Uh, for 2 Samuel 22 and 31. Uh, God's way becomes perfect. He shows you the way. He proves that his perfect is, is, is his way and it's perfect. It's a maturing route. Good God Almighty. Hosea uh, 14 and 9. There you'll see uh, the way ways of the Lord are right. The how of God is right. Have confidence in that. It's not just a random how. It's a right how. It's a righteousness how. It's a how that's going to be glorious for the believer. God, God Almighty. It is, according to Psalm 77 and 13, it is also a holy how. Woo! Good God Almighty. Holy cow. It's a holy how. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. And so, so corny. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, so I am the way. I'm the way. But he's also the truth. And, and I'm going fast. I'm going fast. He's also the truth. And by truth, I mean this. Listen, one of the things you understand when he's the truth, you got to go back to Proverbs 23 and 23. When you go to Proverbs 23 and 23, you see scripture that you have seen before, which tells you that you have the ability to buy truth. But then the scripture says, but don't sell it. But sell it not. Does somebody hears it? Uh, buy truth, but sell it not. So that means you can acquire truth, but your responsibility once you acquire it is not to let anybody take it from you. Don't sell it. How? Don't pimp it out. How? Hold it for yourself so it can be a benefit. So I am the way, the truth, Good God. And when you understand the word truth, there you understand that truth in this particular context speaks to us of actual reality. 
I am not. Listen, when, when God says I am the way, I am the truth. He's saying when he gets to the truth, he's saying I am the real reality. I am the facts. Y'all, good God Almighty. Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. I am the one who's got it down. And I'm telling you what I say is what's going to be. Hallelujah. So I am the way and I am the truth. There, this is a place of where facts are understood and recognized and realized. And so we understand uh, that that's what is actually happening in that, that passage of scripture. Uh, that word truth there, it means aletheia, uh, which is uh, what is true. In any, here's, here's what I love. When you understand that in the original language, it's saying to us, what is true in any matter or case? Good God Almighty. Did you, understand, did you hear what I said? I said, what is true in any matter or case? Uh, so let me give you uh, an example. Um, I just bought, I, I bought recently, because my kids are, grew over the summer. God, I wanted them to slow down a little bit and save daddy some cash. But, but they kept growing. And, um, and so I went, to, uh, I went to the store. I bought Raina some shoes. And the shoes that I, I, I bought her uh, were those kind of sandals that you slide your feet in with the little cork sole. I don't know what they called. And, and um, so I bought her those. And they have, they're multicolored. But it depends on what angle you're looking at. When you look at one angle, the color changes versus another. You know, for her, they're real cute and she likes them a lot. Uh, but they're always changing. Sorry, that's not the truth that God is. Regardless, God, I feel like, uh, regardless of what the condition is, the truth ain't changing. Good God. So when he says, I'm the truth, he's saying regardless of the condition or the situation, you can get it wet. It can be humid outside. It can be rainy. You can be depressed. You can be oppressed. You can have money. You can have lack. Wherever you are, this ain't changing. Y'all, good God almighty. So he is the truth. He is the truth. He is certainty. And, it's a ma and, and it understands it's, 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 in, it's necessary that, that we understand that God is certainty when we understand that trouble is the place of uncertainty. All right. OK, let's let's keep moving. So he's the truth. So I told you uh, Proverbs 23, 23, I'm giving you just some scriptures just to study because I'm almost done. Proverbs 23 and 23 talks about buying the truth and selling not. I told you already about Psalm 85 and 11, which says that there is a truth that's coming out of the earth. When we look at that scripture, we also see prophetic fulfillment. We understand that the truth that came out of the earth was Christ because he was the righteousness in heaven. And that, then he was the truth that came out of the earth and went back and ascended back into heaven. Y'all with me? And so we understand that that's who, who Christ was. But we also understand that there is a truth that lives inside of me. You understand it because the scriptures declare that the Holy Spirit, y'all, when you read about the Holy Spirit, you don't always. He says the comfort that he leaves with us is also the spirit of truth. Y'all, good God Almighty. Come on, y'all, study your book, study the book, y'all. We've been quarantined. You better know some scripture. Uh, the spirit of truth, hallelujah, is also identified and is compared with the Holy Spirit. So when I live in this life, if there's, a, if there's truth that's coming out of the earth, it must be coming out of those who have the spirit of truth living inside of them. Good God Almighty. So if I'm looking for truth, you ought to be releasing some truth. Mm. So we also understand when we think about truth or when we understand and study truth, we then understand, I already quoted it, Philippians 4 and 8, which says, which is the scripture that talks about us thinking on these things and whatever things are true, whatever. That's the first thing you are commanded to think about is whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, all of those things. Uh, and whatever virtue, any praise, think on these things. The other thing is that we understand, I'm also give you Second uh, Thessalonians 2 and 10, and I'm also going to give you uh, John's gospel, St. John 8 and 32. Uh, and when you go to Second Thessalonians 2 and 10, you understand that, listen, people perish because they don't love truth. Mm -hmm. Sober them up, Greg Dennis, sober them up. People perish. Because they don't love truth. And so it's our assignment to make sure we're in a place where we are back in love with truth. And the Bible says that those who don't love truth can't be saved, won't be saved. So you got to love truth. Love truth. John 8 and 32, it talks about, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth 
shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. And so, so we understand. So, so, but, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm moving fast. I'm trying to at least. And so I'm, I'm the way. I'm the truth. And lastly, he says, and I'm the life. I'm the life. When we understand that, that he speaks of he's the life, he's talking about I am the Zoe. I am the Zoe. I am the life, which means I am the absolute fullness of life. Whew. Good God Almighty. Zoe, the absolute fullness of life. The absolute, I mean, just think about it. Take a second. The absolute fullness of life. I am life. I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the absolute fullness of life. And believe, listen, believe on me and you won't be troubled. If you believe on me, good God, because I'm the absolute fullness of life. Good God Almighty. And which, which says to us that he is the, when he say the absolute fullness of life, he is that which is essential and that which is ethical. Good. Mm. Which then presents to us if he is that which is essential and also that which is ethical, it also presents to us that he is then the hypostatic union. I'm sorry, I, oh God. He is that which merges that which doesn't make sense with that which is divine. He takes your chaos and he works it out. He could, God Almighty, he goes through for us. Good God, okay, stop getting so happy. All right, uh, the Logos, word, good God, in flesh. Word in flesh, hypostatic union, Christ with us. All right, okay. Um, so, so we understood that he is the life. We understand that he is life. He is, according to Matthew 6 and 25, he says, listen, this is more than food. So whatever you get from food and whatever you think food gives you, I'm going to give you much more, which means I'm able to sustain you beyond your breakfast this morning. I'm be able to sustain you beyond your last meal. Hallelujah. By the way, we're going on a fast. Just FYI, just note there. Put it note to self. Oh, Lord. Uh, so here it is that I'm able to sustain and keep you uh, better than your meal can keep you. If you would just live on me instead of a meal. OK. All right. Uh, uh, life. Luke, Luke 12 and 15. Also, one of our scriptures we talk about speaks of that he is uh, more than when you say more, he is better than life. He is talking about I am greater than any abundant possessions that you have. You thought your life was whatever you could accumulate. I'm better than anything you could ever accumulate. So he's telling you, don't worry about things being accumulated in your life. Don't worry about what you're gathering. Don't worry about your assets. Don't worry about your tax break. Don't worry about your 401k. Don't worry about your house. Don't worry about your land. If you've got me, I can take all those things. Because understand, back then in Matthew's Gospels, chapter 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that the Gentiles have been worried about. I'll make sure that they're added to you. Ah, uh, all right. I'm in scripture. Okay. Um. Proverbs 14 and 30 talks about then now uh, when we speak of life, it talks about I will give you hear this word, a tranquil heart. Wow. A tranquil heart, which is life to the body. Um, you believe on me. Your heart goes from being tranquil. I mean, from trouble to tranquil. You about to go from. Oh, I was going to say pulling your hair out, but I don't, I don't have any. He's about to go from, ah, to, sure, yeah, what do you need? You're about, your disposition's about to change. Good God, oh, okay. And then uh, my last scripture that I'll give you, because we got we to gotta go, my time has expired. It's John 6 and 63. The other thing that when you understand, play something soft for me, if you would, uh, Rabbi Brewer, is that, John 6 and 63 speaks of his word being life for us. His words give you life. That's why we got to watch how troubled we get because you know what happens when people start getting in trouble? They start listening to different voices other than the one voice they should be hearing. You start hearing others' opinions instead of hearing God. And haven't we been there before, uh, y'all, where we have listened to other voices instead of listening to God? Where our friends' opinions made just as much sense, if not more than whatever it seemed like God was saying? 
Or better yet, it seemed like our friend's opinion made more sense. I know you don't want to declare it. But we've been in those seasons and those places in our lives where, you know what? Uh, let me ask my neighbor what they did in this situation. Your neighbor ain't redeemed. Yeah. <laughs> let me ask my boss how they handled this situation. Your boss ain't saved. Well, yours is, Terry. <laughs> this week. <laughs> but, but, but here it is with all these things that we got to make sure we're listening to the right voices. Because his word brings life. Wow. His word brings life. I... I'm putting a, in a period on this message, <laughs> kinda, I guess, because I'm opening my Bible, maybe not quite a period, maybe it's a comma. But he's the way, he's the truth, and the life. And the Bible here says that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, I want you to hear this is very important. You and I would hear that as come as another part of journey, sure, transition. No man gets to make it into or whatever, has proximity with the Father except by Jesus Christ. But I want you to look at that word cometh to the Father but by me. That word cometh there, Darian, if you would do a deep enough study, you would find that it's not just our common language, but it digs into the word meta. Meta as in metamorphosis. Meta as in change. Good God. No man is able to be transitioned into what is necessary. God to be with the Father except by me. My assignment in your life as the way, the truth, and the life is to cause your life to go through a metamorphosis so where it is a coming into, a bringing into, a birthing. It's not about, oh, I'm here. No, it is, I have arrived. I have been shaped. I have been made into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nobody gets that without Jesus Christ. Y'all, because Jesus Christ is the one who changes us, shapes us, molds us. So, God's making it happen in all of our lives. It's his assignment, it's his plan, it's his purpose. He's handling everything. He's handling everything the way that only he can. And so, I, uh, I want to pray with us. I want to pray that though we've seen a lot, we'll only be impacted by his plan. Though we've experienced a lot, it's only his plan that transforms us. Father, we thank you for how faithful a God you are. You are the way, you are the truth, you are the light. And God, we honor you for being the type of God that you are. Now, Lord, cause us to focus on what you have placed before us and not to be given to or over to the vicissitudes of this world, the challenges of our life. But God, I pray that you would let your word really be a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. And we honor you and we glorify you for the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
If you don't know Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted him as your personal savior, today is a great day to do that. And listen, if you are, have been watching services with us and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior and it seemed like, you know, it's so far off, come join us in person at one of our in-person worship services. And we'll make sure that the link is sent out. I don't know how to do it, so don't ask me. But we'll make sure the link is sent out somehow and that you can register to be a part of our in-person worship because we would love to meet you and minister to you in person so that your heart can be turned over to the Lord and you could recognize the victory that happens with the saints that Christ gives us and that that could be your testimony. Give the Lord your heart today. Make today the first day. And if tomorrow becomes a challenge to you, give God your heart again tomorrow. And if the next day after that becomes a greater challenge, give God your heart again on that day. And just every day, just ask God. Pray to Him. He's faithful and He's just. I didn't talk about one of my favorite things in Scripture is when Thomas says in John 20, when he's in a place of, of disbelief, and he says, I won't believe until I stick my finger in his hand or my hand in his side. And then God walks through a wall. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus walks through the wall. And when he gets there, Joe, he won't allow his transformative experience of coming through walls without doors, entering rooms without doors. He doesn't allow that to be the end of his event. He makes sure that he meets Thomas exactly where his doubt was. And this morning, I want to encourage you that God is willing to meet you wherever your doubt is. That wherever you've been doubting God, wherever you've been missing God, let God know. And when he walks through the wall, <laughs> he's going to meet you right where your doubt is. He's going to meet you right where your doubt is. And so we thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Now, it's time to give. If you are in person worship with us today, please, uh, if you brought your giving with you, you have that opportunity to give at our door at the rear on today. But if you are uh, if you're giving as well electronically, we invite you to come on, pull out your phones, get your tablets. We give by way of, of cash app. Um, Terry, you can go back to everything. Isn't that what you was playing? Oh, you can go back to, um, and um, you can give by cash app, Givelify. You can give online at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Or you can mail your gifts uh, right here to 6419 York Road. Baltimore, Maryland, 21212. We would love this to have you as a part of our congregation. Join us. Become a part of Kingdom Worship Center. Help us do the work of ministry we've been doing in this season of lack. God has shifted us to be able to supply an abundant amount. And so I'm so grateful, but that's because of you, God's people. All right. So we thank you. Thank you for your generosity and giving. Thank you for your faithfulness. We pray that God's richest blessings will be upon your life. May the blessings of the Lord make you rich and may he add no sorrow in your life. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us. Have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. I hope you got what I got from service today because it was awesome. Just remember the cure for a troubled heart is belief. Believe God in every situation and everything, and it will be all right. Join us next Sunday right here at 10 a.m. at kwc.online.church, or you can go to our YouTube channel, which is Kingdom Worship Center Media. Do have a wonderful week, and remember, we're still in a pandemic, okay? So practice social distancing. Stay healthy, stay safe.